37 years after Windows' first version, Microsoft still dominates the personal computing market. 75% of computers worldwide still use Windows. Most people, like State Farm Accounting and Karen from HR, don't need to spend a small fortune on a machine that will make them the next world-famous music producer, video editor, programmer, fill in the blank creative genius. They just want an operating system that's half the price of Mac OS, won't crash, and can run at a decent speed so they can present earnings reports to their boss during their next meeting. So today, I'd like to dedicate this video to the people doing the unsexy jobs making the world go around as well as the man behind Windows, Microsoft's founder, the one and only Bill Gates. By high school, Gates was already getting paid for his programs. First, his school contracted him to automate its class scheduling system. After this, he started a company called Travodata, which collected information from traffic counters and provided this information to engineers for further analysis. After graduating, Gates went to Harvard to study math and computer science. However, after just two years, Gates dropped out. He'd already seen success in creating computer-related businesses and was confident he could do more good outside of the classroom. Good evening. I have asked for this radio and television time tonight for the purpose of announcing that we today have concluded an agreement to end the war and bring peace with honor in Vietnam. To end the, end the war. In 1975, Gates experienced his first major breakthrough into the world of computers after he created a programming language for a computer called the Altair 8800. Today, when everyone has a smartphone in their pocket, it's hard to imagine a world where computers were far from a household item. But in 1975, computers were still relegated to gigantic mainframe computers at banks and in the garage of the eccentric guy down the street tinkering away on whatever dudes did on their mini computers in 1975. <laughs> Gates' new company, which went on to become the world-famous Microsoft, created Elter Basic as an easy-to-use programming language that let computer hobbyists fulfill their digital fantasies. In 1975, an Elter 8800 with Elter Basic would set you back $5,500. And mind you, for all this cash, you didn't even get the luxury of a screen because computers back then didn't have a display and printed out results on punched paper tape. Building on his success at Elter, Gates had a chance to create an operating system for IBM. Back then, IBM was one of the most prestigious computer companies in the world that was responsible for creating the floppy disk and office copiers as well as revolutionizing computer-to-computer -computer communications in a time before the internet. Despite these achievements during the early 1980s, IBM was losing market share to Apple because of their extremely easy-to-use computers that had a monitor and graphical user interface. Or in layman's terms, they had a screen with stuff you could control with the mouse. Therefore, IBM needed a solid operating system for its upcoming IBM PC, its first computer with a display that it banked on to fend off Apple. Gates helped IBM create the PC-DOS operating system, which appeared on the screen as lines of text. When you wanted to run a program on PC-DOS, you had to manually type in commands. For all of his effort, Gates only got around $160,000. However, through the prestige of collaborating with IBM, Microsoft became a household name in the computing industry as the users of other non-IBM computers decided to buy and use DOS as well. In 1985, Microsoft created Windows, an operating system with its own graphical user interface, to directly square off with Apple's slick products. Over the next 10 years, Gates kept honing his operating system, which culminated in the iconic Windows 95. 
This operating system has many of the features that are still present on computer monitors all over the world 25 years later, such as the Start menu and the taskbar. After the world survived the Y2K scare, Gates suddenly stepped down as CEO of Microsoft. At the time, he was worth $63 billion. He probably decided enough was enough and shifted his focus to philanthropic projects. In 2000, he put $5 billion towards founding the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. By 2013, it was deemed the world's wealthiest charity with assets totaling over $34 billion. The foundation has used its funds to help combat disease such as AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria in developing countries. Despite Gates' massive amounts of wealth from the success of Microsoft and other ventures, has pledged to give away 99.6% of his fortune. On July 14th, Gates took concrete action towards this endeavor and transferred $20 billion of his personal assets to his charity. Gates was quoted as saying, I have an obligation to return my resources to society in ways that have the greatest impact for reducing suffering and improving lives. Gates' fortune reflects the astronomical shift in computing he helped usher in through Windows. When Gates started programming, computers were expensive machines used by specialists. A short 25 years later, Windows made computers simple and cheap enough so people practically all over the world could have one. And for those who can't afford a computer, Gates is there with his foundation trying to improve the lives of the world's poorest people. It seems like all the cool kids want to grow up and be like Elon Musk or Steve Jobs. Despite all the high-profile media appearances and fancy yachts, maybe we should all aspire to be a little more like Gates, a person who has proven through his humility, ambition, and charity that you only get what you give.